So I'm cementing this block wall guys and I'm gonna show you step by step, trial by trial, stage by stage, very very detailed video here. Um, just talking about what's happening here. Basically it's a door wall, so we'll have a door frame in. And there was a door frame there originally, but we're not too bad. We're pretty much flush right through the three, which is a good thing. It keeps things a bit simple, but we'll talk about things like that later on in the video. So, getting straight to it guys, uh, one of the most important things is preparation and just giving the wall a quick brush down, make sure there's no dust or any loose bits on these walls. If it is very dusty or dusty at all guys, get a mask on and do as I say, not as I do. But yeah, have the door open right behind me and just go out if I do need a bit of fresh air. So the next thing after you is do clean down your walls if there's any snatters or chippings to be done. We'll be cleaning up the floor. Keeping the floor clean, guys, will not only keep the place safer for yourself, you don't trip on any of these wee bits of plasterboards or timber that's been left behind um, or rubble. And what it'll also do is it'll help your workflow better when it's nice, clean and clear. And any sand and cement that would happen to fall on that floor is now reusable. We can wet it up and use it again. So next stage here guys is wetting down the wall. These are quite old blocks. And just going to give them a wee splash first and see how that dries. The idea with doing any sand and cement is controlling the suction. Whether it be too hot or too wet, you want to be in control. You want to be the guy who's making it set to the timings that you want and by that I mean is you don't want to over wet it and you don't want to under wet it so just getting a feel for that and the best way to do that is actually to wet it down and put a wee trowel full of sand and cement on the block and see how it dries up. That concrete head will need PVA or SBR. Speaking of SBR, I put in a little dash into my render here, the sand and cement I'm mixing. Just a wee taste, just to help with an extra bond and strengthen my mix up that little bit. There's also something mesmerizing about the SBR going into the water there before you actually give it a good stir up. Do recommend giving it a stir up guys, as you can see it will eventually settle right through but if you're looking to get your mix started put a gauge and trowel through the stuff. Also have some mortar mix in there or plaster sizer. No need for waterproofer on this one as it's inside so I'm not too worried about that. And I'll be going with a three, three to one or a four to one mix on these walls. So yep, starting top left here. I'm gonna work along the top and basically Sometimes what it might be better to do is working from the frame out as you know what depth you're working to But the way where it falls a bit lucky here is this wee strip on my left I was very tempted to chip it off, but it's really 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 strong. It's so solid. So just left it It's actually render from I think this part used to be outside door and that would have been a reveal on an external door basically but so yeah it hasn't been chipped off and when I tested it with a hammer it, it didn't seem worth my time chipping it so it's quite solid just work to it it's also in line with the door frame that's there so there was no real need to take it away so kind of getting lucky that way where I can actually pull my edge off a bit but my idea here is get on the whole top if it does dry guys, if you feel that it is drying on you, you can stop, straighten it and then rub it if it's drying really really fast. But if not, a wee wall like this, you should be able to get it on, especially if you have a good mix ready. And one mixed and one in the mixer already. Should give you a bit of time. But yes, I am working left to right. A lot of people doing satin cement will feel more comfortable working from the right if they're right handed to the left and all I can say to that is do what's most comfortable for yourselves what you find you're dropping less stuff you're getting less error in behind your render 
Uh, to me, that's the most important thing is to not drop any earth when you're cool. So, still working along the top here, and it's quite handy as I can reach the top from the ground. But, guys, if you feel like you're stretching, don't stretch, you'll put your back out. Um, so, always use a hop up or step ladders, whatever you feel comfortable with and safe with. That's the main thing. And the main thing is just don't stretch. So you can see what I've done with the wee wire, the wee alarm box. I've just put a nail up and just sort of hooked it on the nail on the ceiling. Which is grand as the ceiling's going to be getting plastered. As you can see it's all plasterboard. So just a wee tip for you is to keep wires up out of the way. You can also use scrim tape to tie it from there to another wire from, from what's going to be a light. So keep things handy and out of the way. So now we have the top one. Now we need to tackle the two bottoms. And sometimes you'll find door frames are quite heavy. Sometimes the joiners set them really heavy on one side and pretty nice on another side. Mo most times when a joiner, a good joiner, what a good joiner would do there would be on the small side he'll go a bit heavier and on the big side he'll go a bit bits more shallow so that you're not so you're not wasting as much render but as long as you're a good sort of I would say 10 mil you'll be you'll be okay with a nice nice coat of render and um, doesn't have to be exactly 10 mil yet no you know doesn't have to be right down to the exact millimeter but you'll want a nice bed of satin cement on guys and that will give you good strength and a nice a nice background for skimming and um, and this this will all this is all preparation for skimming and usually after this is done you'll leave it a day or two to dry up before you'll skim the actual wall so i want to talk about these blocks the reason that they're not plastered is i think there was a paneling on top of these blocks but the very interesting thing about these blocks if you stir at them very very closely they're actually made from insulation balls the wee the wee round circular balls that get usually pumped into a cavity these are made from them which i have never ever seen in my life before As i know some bricklayers and block layers watch the channel i'd love to hear your thoughts if you've ever laid any lightweight blocks that were made from palestinian balls so really this wall is a load of balls but i'm sure it'll be quite warm also i'm pretty sure these were a real light lightweight block to actually work with and also that's another reason why i used some sbr my mix because i want to make sure i'm getting a good bond of this believe it or not they're soft enough wall but there's still some good strength in them and what I've found is they don't dry the way them white blocks, them white light black, white, white lightweight blocks dry. So to me, they're they're the best lightweight block I've worked over the top of. Um, where the fella who originally built this, I don't know where he would have got them. I've never seen them anywhere. Perhaps he actually made them up himself. Um, very curious if any black black layers in the channel here wants to drop a few comments about that but yeah so again everybody's always learning something new even myself as i've never worked over anything like that before and the way i think i tackled it is very good and work, worked a treat anyway everything finished up real well and here we go for straightening now Everything's on on this side guys, so it's just a matter of pulling the edge up the door frame. I can either work off frame to frame and as you've seen earlier, the wee white strip on my left is actually in line with the frame so I can pull up off all three if I want. So the important thing here is guys is filling your slacks. That smooth bit to my right there, that is a wee miss, a wee bit of a slack. And as you can see that it's all coming up sort of like a ripped turd finish on the surface when I straighten it and that indicates that you've removed satin cement render off the surface of it and that's actually a good thing and 
leaving it open like that there you can see any smooth areas then up top left there that's a bit of a miss so you'll know to fill them in and there's another one there marked by an X if you're not too confident in being able to see them as you go you can always mark them like so put a tick or an X on them so you know fill this area now don't let the fact that it's always rough like that when you straighten fool you as well sometimes there's other areas where you might have dug in too far so you'll want to be looking out for those and fill them and re-straighten it again but don't worry I'll show you examples of how you double check things and make sure you get them right from the word go so every time you do pull your straight edge off guys it's it would be quite important to take the render off the edge and get it into the bucket ready again you can wet up so notice what I'm doing here guys I'm cleaning that top angle and it, there's a bit of a slack and the reason I could see that slack is I was looking up and down the straight edge when I'm bringing it towards myself and I could see daylight through it that means there's a bit of a hollow and again fill it out and re-straighten it so it's quite important when you are using the straight edge is to really pay attention and you can look up and down the edge look for hollows look for bumps if there's hollows either side you'll know you could be rocking on a big bump that might need cut away and um, so there's lots of things to really concentrate and think about and during this whole video we'll, we'll cover as much aspects as possible and you can see it's all all looking quite uniform now and get just a better look at things here from the side i'll pull it from the door frame here this time you can see nice and straight no no daylight through it it's all touching that means your wall is straight guys now plumb and level is all a different thing i'm just going by the door frames here because they are the fixed points and they are not being moved so i have to work with what i'm I'm given and that's what we're given here guys the other thing is here now door frames quite quite important that you cut them back ready for the skim coat plaster and I've just found another wee hollow pull it off now the smaller smaller hollows that are only you know a wee dab of stuff you can get them later on with the float and I'm just actually using the straight edge to cut back the frame there and that will just allow the skim coat to fall in as you'll notice here there's a bit of a gap now and we'll clean our frame, frames off at the end but as you can see cut it back guys in behind the frame and that will allow the skim coat to fall in flush and I do recommend when you're rubbing it up with the float too that you also carve it up that road as well just to make sure a bit of a knot here in the door frame that I have to actually work around. I'll leave that to the joiner to clean. I don't want to be chipping that off and him complaining that he has to fill out. So it's straightened that side as it was picking up a wee bit. And now just this other side coat and straighten. And guys, I do recommend you just wear rubber gloves and you can always feel the rain there to see if it's getting crusty on the surface and if it is that means it is drying, drying out guys and you might want to pick up the pace or stop and wet the bottom of the wall that wee bit much more um, or another wee splash so again I'm working off my frame here that's my fixed point um, I'll do a later video on setting up rules and stuff and if anybody's interested hit me up in the comments but it, it will be done all the same but if there's much want for it I will push it out a, that bit quicker and get that video edited so as you can see guys when you're doing sand cement work on a wall like this really do want to have a wee bit of pace about you get the wall on quick and if you are leaving it open the way I'm doing that will allow the wall to dry out that bit quicker and this was this job was all done some time ago and it's quite warm you can see the light flooding in there behind me but basically 
you know, if you can get it all coated quickly and get it straightened up and let it dry in, that means it's ready for you to finish off, float finish, ready for your skim coat. So always try and bend your knees, guys, when you're working at the bottom. And quite awkward when you get to the corners, you get much room to bend your knees. But the way I coat there, as you can see, is up, up, and then try and pull across to tidy it up a bit. The tidier you coat your sand cement, the easier it will be to rule off and straighten, believe it or not. And again, so the straighter you get the wall and the neater you get the wall when you straighten up, the easier it will be to float. And then again, it, it just keeps following on from there, guys. This, the neater your float coat is, the easier scum coat will, will go on. It's it's just all a domino effect, guys. If your wall's not straight, your skim coat will never ever straighten it. Um, your only really recommended skim coat to go about 3 mil. I know you can go a bit heavier, but your recommendations is 3 mil, guys. So, saying that now, if, if you were happen to have missed an angle and realized after the fact, you can, if it's the next day, you can actually scribe back sand and cement, it'll still be green and what green means is soft, fresh, new so you will be able to carve it back some still and then you still have the option, you can fill it out if it's an internal wall you can bond or hard wall it or maybe just put a wee coat of skim on, brush it in let it dry, PVA it, whatever, and re-skim again but if it's still soft you could probably just get away with skimming straight over it as long as it's taken up so you can see the big slacks I'm left with here guys and really when you are sand and cement and walls the important areas are all the angles and around the door frame and in this case uh, occasion if there's light switches they are all also going to be important you want to clean them out and also make sure they're nice and flush away around and for the reason for that is there's going to be a light switch fitted so you don't want it showing up any bumps the angles will be easily seen you can see me filling out slacks here guys you can see exactly what's happening and again skirtings why you want them straight is there's going to be a joiner fit the skirtings seam around the, the door frames and potentially along the top there could be coven a cornice going on so you'll want to keep that nice and straight as well but for the likes of a door wall here we're already got a fixed points so I tend to find door frames can be a bit easier than window walls where you have to set out your own rules and stuff. So really it is down to yourself then to to set them out correctly. Again, hit me up in the comments if that's something that you, you want to learn next. And you can see I'm being very particular, trying to fill out as much slacks as possible and get this wall real straight, straight before I even hit it with a float. And also before I even hit up the straight edge here, again, the neater it is, the better. And was recently was doing some work with a fella and he's a bit like Kirk Giordano. He liked to put the wall on nice and fat and ugly as he said. And basically what that means is putting it on real heavy and cutting it all back so you don't have to fill out. Where I'm the opposite, I like to coat, try to coat it. I actually like to try to coat it almost spot on and I don't mind filling out my slacks as basically I find if you too coat too heavy the likes of this door frame if it was really heavy I would coat up around the frames guys and let it take up and then I would go about my business elsewhere doing other walls setting up rules floating other walls and let that take up as I find if you try to go too much in one coat you can end up looking at it all sliding off onto the floor so sometimes it is better to build up gradual and don't try to get too too much on at one time and again as you can see what I've just done there I just cut that door frame back a little bit and I'm running my eye up and down that as I'm bringing that edge to me so along here guys I'm going to pull my edge down on this and then come across again and come up and down again just double check everything quickly make sure it's all nice and straight and before i start rubbing up again pull it towards you keep a good look at it and check the skirting angle up so now that i had that all done it's time to rub up and as you can see this float has nails or screws in it whatever you choose to use 
I pref- I do prefer needles. We we panel pins. We 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 fine pins. And again, I'm just starting work coated first, as most times this will be the area that's the driest is where you first started. So I tend to work along the areas that were coated first. It also keeps you in a bit of routine, guys. And um, quite important when it comes to plastering is to fall into a bit of a routine, as a bit of a structured work schedule will will go smoother and you'll know what you're doing and again like I said earlier any wee holes you can fill them in and the great thing about having a nice clean floor is I can pick my render up off that floor and it's not dirty there's no stones in it there's no dust in it no bits of paper from plastic wood or wood it's just salt and cement although it might be a bit drier which on most occasions actually works for me that much better I like to the rub it in makes a bit more took up, a bit drier and I find it fills the, the holes much better than using real wet stuff although if it is drying up you can use a wee bit of creamier stuff from the mixer so again just checking my gap here look pay attention to that guys and um, if I need to cut back more I can run that rendering shell up even backwards and just shave back some more. Paying attention again guys, cleaning the angle. Very important. This is going to be getting skim coated, like I said, 3mm. We don't want any lumps, bumps, curves along that top. Your float's never going to get as clean as the angle, or as clean as the trowel along that angle. So after I run my trowel and clean the angles, I always do just float it again. And cutting you can see how much I'm taking out of this frame guys making sure I have a gap to allow the skim coat in and just tidying it up again with the float it's quite important guys that you don't leave any big jaggy edges when you do cut things back and you want it all at this stage you want everything as clean and tidy as possible this is what your skim coat's going to go again you could just tile over the legs of this wall if this was a bathroom there's no need to actually go then and start skimming the wall. Uh, Tied adhesive should grip to this key brilliantly. Um, I've heard many tailors actually prefer this um, to skim coated walls. So something to take into consideration guys as well. The extra bit of effort might not be needed. And you can see how I fill out as much of these wee holes as possible. And getting a nice key. Those marks will be lovely to, to help grip your satin cement with a mechanical key to your skim coat in. Again, check on my frame here before I go too far. Very important guys is frames and angles. I keep on going on about it, but that's because it's very important. I'm trying to drill at home. And if you're new to rendering, these are the things you want to really, really pay particular attention to be it using an edge, running your eye up and down it and um, just constant we're really getting places now guys, that's the top done and as you see I like to clean my angles as I go and that's why I always keep the trowel in my hand also I use the trowel as a bit of a hawk, it can nip a wee bit of stuff in and if you have many holes you will rather use a hawk to fill them in as you float but as you see it's not a great big wall and I do pay particular attention to try to straighten the wall as neat as possible. Also, the neater you have that wall straightened, if this render, the sand cement was starting to really set on me, really pick up, um, what, I, what I can do then is rub it much quicker as it's neater so the float will go around it quicker. And again, hopefully you've noticed what I just did there guys, cleaning that door frame back with the bit back of the trowel. Just scraping a wee bit out of it to allow my skim coat to go in. Um, and, you know, it's very important. Also, when you are doing that, guys, when you're working with these frames, try not to dig into the frames. Most times they're just pine, they're like a soft wood, so you don't want to damage them as the very edge of these door frames is going to be visible. As if you notice, um, Architects always have a wee mill around them, a couple of mill around. So, 
clean your bottoms away guys as well as long as I clean the tops I also scrape my bottom back and you'll notice I'm giving up the wall a double check make sure my skirting is nice and straight and this wall is going to get skimmed right through there again checking all angles being really particular here so getting pretty happy with the results so far and do remember guys after you use check them to give them a bit of a, a rub again where your your edge might have dug in so I think I just caped a wheelbar over and spilled all my good render for my next wall but again luckily I cleaned the floor so I won't have any foreign stuff in my mix I'll have just sand and cement so here we are on the last few bit guys and if you are new to this Obviously some plasters and renders who've been at this game much longer than me do tend to watch these videos and I'd love to hear from you as well guys just what what's going on in, on your jobs and stuff but if you are new to this I don't recommend putting on too much going too far and try to really get the feel of it as you can see I'm pressing in still sort of soft on the surface but when you press in you can get the feel of is it drying, is the wall soaking in, is it drying on the surface, you know, you learn so much more by feeling it, running your float over it and feeling even with the tips of your fingers how dry is this and you'll learn so much from it that way guys and you'll notice running the float in behind the door frame again one of my nails seems to have disappeared on me. It's just a matter of feeding it back out again. You do want to leave a, a nice sort of mark, guys. Too deep of a nail, it'll leave you big ridges and horrible to skim over. And again, not deep enough, and it'll, it'll not really do its job. So, just we're really double checking everything here now, and just run, run the float round <laughs> again, being very particular on such a small wall but the results will will keep following on guys when you are being particular like so and again checking the wall so basically get everything checked and straightened there was a wee slight bend at the bottom there and it's because the, the frame actually bends in the way and so once I'm pulling up I'm following the shape of the frame but I don't really have too much choice in that matter and speaking of frames guys always wash them down after you nice and clean be easier to clean later when you're skimming and again looking out for the joiner